Hey guys, my name is Kaden or Nighthawk and I am here with a video editor's note. So I just want to let you know that I am changing up the way that I am posting these two parts for painting the drift track. I'm looking at the finished product right now. Well, the painting portion of it and I think it looks good. You guys are going to find out in today's video on how that went down. Next part is just going to deal with uh, putting the whole thing back together and just... However, it seems that in today's clip we, we may be jumping all over the place. At, I've been painting this for... The, the course of today and yesterday uh, it got a little stormy yesterday but then today it turned out really nice so i used most of the, my time to get as like all of it as done as if done as efficient as possible excuse me for my english <laughs> there for a minute but we got pretty much everything done and painted today i had to jump i had to rely on some timers to go from the frame do the wheels do the chair back to the wheel back to the frame etc etc just want to give that quick heads up in case the, scene, the video seems all over the all if just in case if the video seems to be all over the place but anyway guys i hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you guys later that's all Happy spring, everyone. Today is the day we finally paint Junkrat. Uh, this is part one of our, of our two series. Whoops, excuse me. And this part, we are going to be focusing on dismantling the trike and then uh, prepping it by sanding it down and maybe putting some primer on it. It is a great day, so I think I'm, gonna, I'm hopefully going to get all the good filming done today and edit it in the near future because i'm also trying as we speak i'm trying to get my new computer working as you will, will have hopefully seen the build on project amarok let me know what you guys thought about that build by the way but anyway uh i'm gonna go ahead and just get set up and we shall begin i don't want to take too much time but let's see what we can do i'm going to first start fo focusing on the front by taking off all the fork pieces because what i want to do is try to keep i do want to like have this gray match with the body style but i do want to keep this black so we're, we are just going to take all this apart and just paint all this and tape it up accordingly. All right, now let's just start tearing it down. All right, so I'm going to start by taking off the wheel. But first, in order to do that, we we'll to get it off. Actually, no, because this is a V-brake. Normally what I do is I take off, or I, I deflate the tire. But since these are V-brakes and these can just go, you can split like that. Makes my job a little bit easier on myself. Actually, since this is still a new and great wheel, by the way, I've been happy with this purchase. All I'm going to do is just loosen that up. And I think I might know where these little washers go now, coming to think of it. They go on the inside of this, not the outside. And actually, I don't, I don't need them screw this out all the way. And there's a little, these little guys here. And boom, there's the front tire. I think I can take off, if I remember correctly, the top, by the way. They use metric on their <coughs> bolts here. These big guys always come in handy. So I don't think I have the... There we go. Boom, just to break it loose. Hello. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Boom. Sweet. Oh, I guess. Well, okay. No. Oh, I gotta disconnect the throttle too. We need to disconnect the throttle. <laughs> so, how was everybody's day, by the way? I hope everyone's having a good day. I'm enjoying the sunshine here, so that's I'm grateful for that. Just because I am whoa. You that throttle bolt was loose. That's why I was not getting full throttle earlier. Here we go. Throttle's disconnected. It's been a while since I've seen this thing naked without any uh, things to it. And I had to take. I had to do this by the way because this original housing wasn't long enough, and I had to get a little bit extra. Otherwise, there's just all this wire. I'm gonna put my hand under here because there is a couple of loose uh, balls from the ball bearing in here. The ball bearing ring. I'm pretty sure it's what it's called. I need to remember the order which these were taken off there it is there's a little yep see there goes one. Oh shoot there's an i forgot there's another one at the bottom here goodness gracious these things are always 
And yep, th there they all go. Cool. They all literally just came off. I mean, that's probably a sign that I'm, I might need to get a new set, but I mean, I don't know. All right, so I didn't manage to get most of them. Um, if I find any more, then we'll just c collect as many as we can. Um, uh, actually, no, I think that there's another one right there. <laughs> but we're just gonna know, worry about taking out the seat next. We are gonna be painting the seat, cobalt blue. Um, it did get a little bit dirty in the back, but we're, we will clean it up and then maybe just, yeah. So what I did, and what, I'm, what I might consider in the future is maybe taking the brackets here and just cutting them out in slots so maybe we can adjust the seat. But we also need to be concerned that there's a chain back here in the chain guard. But since that's already sorted, I mean, I mean we can always play with it. Also managed to have it, happen to have a quarter 20 bolt in just in stock that I might just be able to kind of push through here so we're not using zip ties. I'm not wasting them. Zip ties are a good solution temporarily, doesn't work. And well, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. I need to get... For anyone that is wondering where I got this fucking seat, I'm not, I can't even recall if I made it clear. If you look on Amazon, it's called a Weiss plastic bucket seat, and I can put that down in the description if they still sell it. And there's just four of them on this under the seat here. Ugh. My original plan was to have them just bolted out down the brackets, but it would just be better to weld it. Yeah, that's a little... Okay, yeah, these are a little weird. The way they did it, when you get, if you were to get this seat, the way that they did it is they they supplied you this hardware with like these threading screws that you kind of just have to thread into the, this plastic seat. And other people have used the seat for a drift track. You could you could potentially run into a review where they said it was a good drift track seat, and I can tell you it's really comfy on this guy. If one thing I could complain is just the shape. I kind of wanted just a regular rectangular shape, but not have it kind of round up towards the top, but you know, it's it's a seat. It works. It does the job. I'm not complaining. <laughs> there we go. And there we go. There's the seat off. Good to go. Bada bean. Whoop. Bada bean, bada boom. So that's what the that's what it looks like under the trike if anybody was curious we just we put the brackets on the chair and then kind of just lined it up and then welded it in place pretty sturdy well it's could be cleaner but i mean it's something you really don't notice unless you're like specifically paying attention okay Ugh. with that out of the way we need to work on the seat next or the wheels next so this one, I'm a little worried about. This, because this is a one inch lock nut, it takes a one and a half inch socket. And I remember impacting this with an air impact gun, and I don't know if I will be able to take this off. And if that's the case, shoot. But what we could do to the minimalist is maybe move the hubs out of the way, but I'm gonna see if my impact drill can do it. I probably wouldn't recommend doing this but we're just gonna see what happens. I will be impressed if it works. I think it is actually coming out, wow. Really? Whoa, Oot. Oh. Felt something move. It's actually working. Slowly but surely, poor thing's getting a torque and workout. I hope I'm not really. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> we got it. I used a combination of an, my impact drill, the 20 volt lithium ion. Damn well impressed for its low value. And now I used the breaker bar as well. I think your best bet is to use maybe a better impact drill just so you don't wear out your, this one and just use a breaker bar so you can get more leverage and you can apply more torque. Uh, think physics, you either apply a stronger force or you get a longer lever arm. It's physics, it's physics in high school, torque, force times distance. How can you increase torque? All right, let's go ahead and take out the other side real quick. Ta-da, we got it off. So now 
I think you guys have probably have seen this long enough. I'm just, um, all I'm gonna do from here on out is just remove the engine and then remove the axle completely. And then we'll be down to a um, spare, spare frame. Catch you guys in a second. So this sandy disc is just used to just wipe up the surface uh, just to give you a good little start to making all nice and shiny things. But as you can see, I did most of it up on the top side here. Um, I probably should do the underside, but I'm not going to worry about it as much. It was a little harder to do the rounder stock since, I mean, it can only just like kind of rub it like this. I think it might be better if I use sandpaper in this case. But other than that, we are mostly ready to get some primer on the chassis here, which I'm excited for. So I think the next thing I'm going to do is start to transfer to the backyard and then set up a tarp to lay this on, and then I'm gonna start primering this thing. And I'll see you in a couple minutes. Hopefully it doesn't. For the time being, all I'm gonna do is just get ready to wipe this down with just a very damp washcloth. And then I'm going to put on the first thin coat. Um, if anybody was wondering, I did work on getting the underside. Just briefly, since it's not gonna be as noticed, I do wanna to try to paint the underside. But yeah, I'm... Said it. I'm just gonna give this a quick little wipe down and we'll put on the first coat of primer. My plan is I'm gonna, if it starts raining, hopefully I can it can wait for like motor nature can wait at least 20 minutes for it to be dry to the touch, and we can call a retreat inside and work on this in our day. But I'm hoping that I can just get the first set of coats. All right, here we go, people. Whatever happens, I am excited to get your these boots this far. So while that's drying, I'm just gonna go off and do a tour inside the house and give it about maybe 15, 20 minutes to dry to the touch. Since I've been working in different areas, it'll take a little, maybe a little shorter to dry off and hopefully it'll stay above 50 degrees for better drying time. So let's just go from there. Okay, unfortunately, this is coming our way. And while it is 60 degrees out here, I don't wanna risk painting out here. So it's been about 15 minutes to the minimum um, I'm just gonna if, if I touch my hand here I mean this nothing's really coming up onto my hands here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carefully transfer it back into the garage and uh, fortunately call it here I'm tempted to also paint that really quick but we might just paint it really quick we're gonna get we're gonna get this here I'm gonna all do this off camera so all right I'll We'll see you when it's a brighter day. Okay, so unfortunately, it did get darker outside. Wind is picking up. I'm not trusting it, and I'm actually glad I got it back inside. So we'll con we'll continue this for s maybe Saturday, if not another day, as I know I do jump cups between the weeks. But you can barely see it, but the junk rat is just sitting there on its side. 
primer drying. I did get most of the underside, thankfully, so we may, when we get back to it, we'll just maybe flip it over, do a quick undercoat, and then we'll full send it. Um, I did not paint the seat. It started to get dark when I, was, when I came back out there, and I'm just like, heck no, not doing it. So, well, I'm unfortunately going to have to catch you guys in the later clip. I will see you soon, I guess. It's now a few days later. It is Saturday and it's nice and sunny out, clear skies. I got a family event later today, so I'm not going to be out here as, as long, but I'm going to go ahead and just keep on going, setting the things up off camera just to improve efficiency. Let's go. I just flipped it from the underside. I primered the underside. It's been dry to the touch and I'm just going to get ready to paint it soon for the next part. Um, we also got the seat primered and that is going to be cobalt blue. Just a quick recap. The rims are also going to be cobalt blue, but first, before I do that, I'm just going to give them a quick little wipe down to get rid of some of the gunk that you might actually be seeing. I mean, in comparison, you can see those little smudges kind of around here. I want a nice contact with uh, efficient surfaces, if that makes any sense, hopefully. So, yeah. I taped up the um, thing. I taped up the little, uh, what do you call those things? Uh, valve thing, valve, valve cap, valve, air valve. I was gonna say that. I taped that up because I'd like to keep it black. And on the other side, I just taped up this because I mean, this is the back side. I'm gonna paint this fully cobalt blue. I remember I, was, I said I was gonna do a hot rod style where I taped up just this little thin layer on the other side here. And I'm gonna spray a paint in cobalt blue and keep this silver effect. Should be kind of cool. So yeah. Um, I also taped up the, the WMS sticker the best I can just so we can advertise what wheel this is. Uh, it is a WMS uh, true roll wheel to spec. Uh, the I don't remember the rim size, but it needs it, need, it needed to fit an 11 by 6 6 tire. And yeah. So I'm just gonna keep going from here then the reason why i'm not really showing most of the progress from here on out is because i don't want to bore you guys to death with like oh i'm just taping up the wheels oh i'm wiping them down oh i just primered it but hey speaking of primer um i've already showed that but we have finally primered the wheels and i'm excited for that i'm just gonna let them sit for about 45 minutes and then we're gonna put our cobalt blue on wait about an hour and then put a clear coat on Maybe not 45 minutes, clear coat, but yeah, progress is being made. Now what I'm working on though is the um, fork. I need to use an adjustable wrench to quickly take off this little, or well, at least loosen it so I can, progress is being made. That's good, good stuff. And that's free. Um, so I'm gonna tape this part up because there's oil on this first of all, and second of all, we need to make sure we don't like add any layers of paint to uh, refrain it from going through the the tube over there, the steering tube. And also because I don't want the threads to be difficult to retighten back on here. So yeah, we're gonna take this up and then I'm gonna wipe wipe this down and then we're going, I'm going to, well, hear me out on this. I'm going to paint the full thing uh, black, a glossy black because the black I have has a primer in it and I'm gonna use that black to paint this the charcoal gray cobalt blue fusion and then you know go from there all right there we go one should know where these springs are all right it is time to see what cobalt blue looks like minutes before we are painting our seat cobalt blue and see for reco times see it dries to the touch in 10 minutes the handle in 30 minutes we can maybe set a 20 minute timer flip the stain over and here we go whoop whoops got some quality on the camera whoops see here we ready set here we go That looks pretty. What 
to be sure I get this chair real nice and good. Make sure I have no missed spots. But it's, if I don't know if you can catch this on camera, but it's just glittering as it touches. It makes contact. Beautiful. <clears throat> Excuse me. One thing I've learned is that I've doubt in the past what the real effect is going to look like. Like you see images online of how it looks, but in reality, you, you can't, your eyes can't see the true potential. It's beautiful. It's also hard to tell. I have enough on there because of the sunlight and then it dries up and it's like oh okay that sort I like that blue it's pretty here comes the, the fun if not the tricky part so we're fusing two colors together we have a base coat of charcoal gray and then a little bit of blending of cobalt blue and then a fusion with the clear coat. It's going to be a little hard because, I mean, normally with Helicar in there, when I combine all the colors together, I kind of wipe the surfaces to blend them in, but I want to try to avoid that because when I painted my mountain bike, I did a similar technique I'm going to do here where I painted a base coat and then put a little bit of strokes of second color being cobalt blue and then I clear coated it. The colors fused together. I'm quick with my timings because I don't want it to fully cure. I, want, I don't want the paint to fully cure yet. All right, here we go. I'm really hoping I selected the right colors here. I'm quite nervous. tell you this, it matches the gray that used to be on my old mountain bike. Here's an image right here of what the color that used to be. with this um i'm not i'm not looking to give up here or anything because i know we still need to fuse two other colors again we need to do the glossy black and the cobalt blue um i think those two colors can help us fix this gray look because i honestly the it matches the gray or not it's not even close to what we used to have on my old mountain bike as i've noted before they look awfully similar if you come to think of it um i could keep it but Again, I think I want to try to do the fusion. So I'm going to let this sit for maybe about 30 minutes to an hour, and then we'll come back and start putting more colors onto it. And here's the seat as it's still drying and whatnot. Still looking pretty good. I think I might flip it over, paint that side really quick, and then also do the wheels. So yeah, catch you in a bit. Alright, so I have had a change of heart uh, for the 
for a design. So we're not painting that because when I put on the black, it's hard to see it in here, but this I think looks really cool. So I'm gonna leave this black, period. I'll leave that black, and then when you put that together with this wheel, I mean, because this part's already been powder coated black or whatever, and then if you mix these two together, it'd be, look, it'd be look cool. Um, I have about 10 minutes before I start fusing colors together here, and then similarly to remove the tape off the wheels and then handle the chair. And then also I painted the handlebars too, just to clean it up a little, I guess. But yeah, that's where I'm at. Okay, so a good amount of time has passed and our reminder has told me that these wheels are done drying. Um, because we're not really gonna worry about uh, reinstalling all these parts yet, I'm just gonna see what this looks like. Are you ready? Boom! So I am quite impressed with how this turned out. Um, this is the technique that I was going for. It's got that little hot rod look to the rims. Um, so all you gotta do is just try to find a way to mask off the rim of this, of the, of the rim, and then just tape it off and then do your painting and then wait the appropriate drying times and well, bam. Um, one thing I'm not impressed with, I, I mean, I, I guess I might have missed just a little bit. You can see some of these little rough edges here. It's not perfect. But I mean, if you if you take like more time to get it in, you you can get something close to this. I didn't even take that off yet. And also another thing too, I tried with uh, preserve the sticker here, but I mean, you live and you learn. I'm just gonna say that's that's good because you know if you look if you look up close, you'll be like, Ugh, but I mean, if you look away, you'll be like, ooh, you know. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the other rim. And also really quick, I'll show you what the back looks like. It looks really good. I'm pr pretty pleased. You can see I had a little bit of runs. When, you're, when you do paint, if you do paint your wheels, just watch out for that. I'm not the expert, but I'm learning. So, but this turned out really good. And because we can, we're not going to be assembling the trike anytime soon, um, we can give the paint the full redry of 24 hours. But yeah, I'm just gonna go from there and get ready to finally paint that or fuse the colors together. Maybe we also got to clear coat our fork, but yeah, I'll do that off camera. All right, here we go. Everything's been put away to dry. I've got the, the fork and beans set on a clear coat. I'm gonna do light sprays on these because I don't want these to be the dominant colors. Uh, the base coat is charcoal gray, and we're gonna have these kind of as a secondary. It'll be about 30 minutes later, and then I'll clear coat this for good. And then we'll go from there, I guess. I'm gonna start with black. Just because I'm gonna make sure I don't like contact it directly. Don't judge me, by the way. <laughs> sure what's on camera here of what happened um so i threw in another color in the mix uh, brilliant blue as you see down there and it seems that it and cobalt blue has dominated the most i did try to have some pinch of black but i had something like this happen to me before when i was painting one of my mountain bikes i had a black as a base coat and i'm doing pitches of navy blue and i could coat about 20 minutes later and then the fusion began so I've got mixed feelings about that. I like it, but at the same time, it's, a part of me also says I don't. I mean, areas like this, for example, looks beautiful. That's kind of the color I want, because you can see some blues kind of poking out there, and yet it's still, it's got that pearl side color. That's really what this feels like to me here. It feels like a midnight blue. That is funny enough, originally one of the old colors I wanted to do, and it looks like I've kind of done that. I mean, funny enough, if you think of cars and cameras shifter cart, 
that's kind of what this looks like. It's that purple, but <laughs> it's not purple. So I used the cobalt blue to like have some help with some of the flakes here, as you can see. And again, about maybe 20 minutes, we're gonna clear coat this and then let it dry. And then call the episode from here. Or call one of the parts from here, whatever's going on. <laughs> so what I may have said and what I was going to plan to do in the past regarding the trike was maybe different from what you're gonna see here. But to be honest, I like this a lot better. I just got done clear coating it and the fusion happened. Um, here are some clips of some of my highlighted favorite spots here but you can see the flake from the cobalt blue. And honestly, I think this looks this looks really good. <clears throat> so, I mean, it is a learning experience. This is probably one of the first times I'm working with mild steel. I mean, I have painted bikes in the past, but I haven't spent as much dedication um, compared to this. So, I mean, there's still a lot of work to be done. As you can probably see, we still gotta get the underside, but we're gonna save that for another day and save that for off camera, because I don't wanna waste any of your time. But this, this is it it's painted good to go but anyway guys um that's going to conclude it for now um i hope you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up tell me what you think of, the, of this painting technique that i did give me your best thoughts don't go too harsh on me that's all i ask anyway i'll see you guys later Bye bye